Hey guys, as a tinkerer, you sometimes need 3D data of your real world object, but there are a lot of possibilities out there for 3D scanning. So I want to compare five ways of 3D scanning from home use to professional 3D scanning. So the criteria we will compare is one, the price of the device itself. The next factor is of course, time, quality, ease of use and ease of learning, precision and detail, price performance ratio. The seventh is the range of use. The last criteria is practicality. Each and every of these criteria will have a range from one to 10 points. It's eight in total, so the maximum it can get is 80 points. So first on our list, an app, it's called Polycam. You put it on auto, then you put your part, you want to 3D scan in the middle, you press play and you start walking around. And as you walk around, it will actually take pictures. In the lower right corner, it will show you how many pictures it has taken. The more pictures you take, the better. It can actually do quite a lot and you try to get different angles. You can even stop and start the process at any point. Move your phone, you can rotate it. It will show you if it wants you to slow down. So we have done now a data set of 128 pictures. And the only thing you have to click is done. And then you basically just press upload and process. It will upload fairly quickly. And then it will take anywhere from 10 minutes to one hour to process on the server. The second technology we chose is videogrammetry. It's basically photogrammetry, but made easier. If you want to see how the process exactly works, we have a video on that. You will find it down in the description below. Photogrammetry or videogrammetry is basically done by taking photos of your part all around your part and then a software will calculate a 3D model out of that. I already know one question in a comment will be, why don't we include it 3D scanning with a camera, handheld photogrammetry? We already use videogrammetry, which is basically the enhanced process of photogrammetry. So we just decided to throw it out. The third scanner we want to compare is a structured light scanner. We have the scanner here from Magic Swift. It is around a thousand euros. Uh, you take your 3D scanning object, place it in the middle, and you press preview here. Uh, basically, it will put lines on your object. The distortion of the line will tell it the form of your object. Press start and see what happens. Okay, now we are getting data. Maybe we have too much light pollution because of course we have our filming light set up. We will shut off the light. The picture will look a little bit bad, but we will have a better scanning result. A few moments later. So we shut down our filming lights so we get a darker room because that structured light, it actually does a grid pattern on top of it, which you can't see. Scan again and do a second pass. So now we will lower it and try to get it out of a different angle. Down on this one a bit. Ah, come on. Come on, let's go. And what we do now, we do everything visible and it is not aligned yet. And we can do auto alignment. Now it will try to align everything into one set of data. A few moments later. Part is aligned, it looks not that good. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! Let's see how it fares with this data set. Yeah, quite a good detail, but it's a little fuzzy, but I'm surprised. Oh, no surgery required. I think your new nose looks great. So now we move on to professional 3D scanning. We use the Arctech 3D scanners for that. The setup itself is pretty easy. You basically just attach your USB and go into your computer. So we will use the Spider 3D scanner. We just attach it, we start our software, and let's scan. So to start it, you have this little button, then you have to find your 3D model and bring it within your designated scanning distance. And what you do is you can basically turn and move. So as you can see, 
the 3D model is creating itself right in front of your eyes. A few moments later. As you see, I'm struggling a little bit to get in there, but that's why this scanner has auto alignment. We can basically just turn it around, start scanning. And now, of course, we want to rescan stuff we already scanned. Yeah, we try now to align your parts. We just place align. So now it asks you if it's aligned properly and we do yes. So what it does now, it will register that and resize everything. So we we'll get way more accurate. And after that, it will do noise reduction, then it will fuse it and then it will calculate it. Great detail and sharp edges. So the next technology is professional photogrammetry. Like in here, you have all the cameras around you. It's about 71 cameras which take photos at the exact same time. Of course, it had the advantage that you have the same angles all the time. So your program can really get um, dialed into that. And it has the advantage that even stuff that is moving like humans can be scanned because all of the photos are taken in a millisecond. So you could actually scan yourself jumping. And another thing is that there are lights in there and it has a really flat lighting all around because it has a lot of it if you actually switch all of them on. So, let's do the scan. So, the only thing we have to do now is press the Influencer Dream button because it makes a selfie out of every possible angle at one. As fast as that, the whole process of actually taking the photos is done. What it actually does, it just uh, creates a folder with all your photos in there and as you can see, it is pretty much out of every angle you could imagine. This data can now be given to the software and be processed. So let's come to the points of this 3D scanning app. Price. As we assume you all have a new generation phone, it's fairly cheap to subscribe. So price-wise, I give it a 9 out of 10. Quality. The quality of the 3D data didn't really convince me. It is super inconsistent, so I only can give it a 3 out of 10. The ease of use and ease of learning. So it is pretty easy to use. It is basically a tutorial that shows you how to do it and you just do it and you get an instant feedback of the server. So ease of use, it is 10 out of 10. Price and performance. So you don't get that much performance out of it, but it's basically free. So the price over performance is actually a nine out of 10. You basically get what you paid for. The range of use is pretty high. So the range of use, I would give it five out of 10 points. Coming to the practicality, you always have your phone. You don't need a software. Everything is handled by the app. Just send it off, you get it back, done. 10 out of 10. The first criteria we have to compare is price. We assume everybody of you has a new generation phone in your pocket. You will need the software, has a free trial, but we're always counting long term. So the free trial will run out and you will have to invest this few hundred euros into the software. So for price, I give it an eight. Time. Video chemistry doesn't take a lot of time while taking the video, but of course you have to process your data. With the software part, it comes down to a three because it can get to very lengthy calculation times. Quality of the 3D scan. The quality of a video 3D scan is actually very high because of the dense data set. We give it a seven for quality. Ease of learning and ease of use. Learning how to film a part, you can do that within 10 minutes. But the actual processing part of your 3D scan is actually a bit of a learning curve. I only can give it like a five for ease of use. Price to performance ratio. The software costs a few hundred quid, but it's actually not that expensive and you get lifelong updates. So I give it a nine for price performance ratio. Range of use. Video chemistry scan is really good in organic stuff like that. Where video chemistry struggles a bit is like on really technical parts. In range of use, unfortunately, I can give it only five points. Our first criteria is price. While it's not as cheap as photogrammetry, it's really not that expensive for a scanner like that. 
to around a thousand euros when you buy one of those and it actually comes with a tripod and with a turntable and it's already calibrated with the software. So for the price, I would give this one a six out of 10. Quality, yeah, the quality, I'm a little bit disappointed to be honest, but you have to keep in mind the price point of this. It is not a professional industrial CD scanner, so I think the quality is okay. So I would give it a four out of 10 points. Ease of learning, ease of use. I struggled a bit, to be honest, to set everything up to find the right processes, but actually, if you get used to it, it is fairly easy to use but ease of use is also your environment. So that makes the usage a little bit more hard. So ease of use, I give it three points. Precision and detail. So it's not super precise for like mechanical engineering, but precise enough for everything. Somebody wants, for example, two with a, with a game or a 3D printer. So in precision and detail, I will give it a six out of 10. Price performance. It still comes in on around a thousand euros and the performance is pretty limited. It does the job very quick, but kind of rough. It's not super precise, but it is not as expensive as an industrial 3D scanner. So in that case, I will give it a four out of 10 for a price performance ratio. Range of use. Actually here it has its strengths because you can scan organic stuff, but you can also scan mechanical stuff and you can do the handheld more for bigger ones. So in that case, I would give it a seven out of 10 actually for the range of use. The last point is practicality. I mean, you see, you have a lot of cables, you have the turntable attached. You can do it with a laptop, so you don't need actually a socket somewhere to put it in, but you always have to set it up in an environment with the right light, you have to calibrate everything, and you are pretty much limited in the size which you can automatically scan with this 3D scanner. So in practicality, I would give it a five out of 10. Price point. It is a professional 3D scanner. This one costs around 13,000 euros. Affordability, I only can give it three points. Time. So on the time you saw, it is fairly quick. I can scan objects, even complicated one, with this under half an hour perfectly. I have to give it eight out of 10 points for time. The next criteria is quality. As you saw, the quality of the 3D scanning data is super good. Even without cleanup, it removed all of the noise. It has crisp edges, real world measurements. The quality can't get any higher in my assumption. So I have to give it 10 out of 10 for quality. Ease of learning, ease of use. It is a little bit a learning curve required to get used to the movement. I managed to show new employees within like one to two days how to actually 3D scan data fairly quickly and super accurate. So the ease of use get eight out of 10 points for me. Precision and detail. As you saw, precision and detail is very high. You get all the details of the surface, even of your textures. The precision is real world scale from ranging from 0.05 to 0.1 millimeters in accuracy. The accuracy and details have to be 10 out of 10. Price performance wise, it is fairly expensive, but the performance is off the chart. So you get a lot of performance out of your one-time investments. Price performance wise, it is a 10 out of 10. The range of use is actually pretty big. That's what she said. <laughs> you can scan small parts as small as a finger cap up to a whole car. The range of use is huge. So I give it a 10 out of 10 practicality. So practicality wise, it's pretty practical. It's small, it's portable, it comes with a really nice case and you only have to bring your laptop and you can pretty much scan anywhere. This case, your laptop and maybe a turntable to make it easier for you to scan it and you're pretty much all set to go. So practicality wise, I give it eight out of 10 points. So for the 3D scanning booth, we will go very quickly through the points because there is no chance anybody of you would ever buy a thing like that. So for the price, I would give it zero points if possible, but one is our lowest because these things can cost in the hundreds of thousands. Time-wise, it is fairly quick to do a scan, but after that you have to process your data anyway, so I give it three out of 10. 
quality. These scanners are made for a very specific use case. So if you put anything other than a human or a dog in it, the quality will be very low. So two out of 10 points. Ease of use and learning. Of course, it's easy to learn to press a button, but you have to get into photogrammetry software after that anyway. So I give it five out of 10 points. Precision and detail. Like mentioned earlier, it is for a very specific use case. As soon as you put anything else in, it will be very imprecise. On top of that, it doesn't have real world scale, two out of 10 points. Price and performance. While costing in the hundreds of thousands of euro, it is basically a big selfie booth. Price to performance has to be a one. Range of views. Like mentioned earlier, it is a very specific use case that these things were built for. So the range of views is a one. Practicality. Here I can only give one out of 10 points because you have to go where the scanner is every time you want to scan something and after that post-process your data. For me, actually, the winner has to be industrial 3D scanning. If you can afford it, go for that. Otherwise, if you just want to try to mess around with uh, 3D scanning and maybe do some figurines or whatever, 3D print it or even do some animations, then go with the app. If you are a tinker on a common basis and you want to have your 3D data to work with, but you don't have the budget for an industrial, my favorite personally is the video grammatry. It takes a little bit more effort, but the data quality is worth it. So the last thing is watch one of our other videos and make sure you're subscribed.